Hey everybody, the Networkberg here. Hope you've been doing well. In this video, we'll be discussing bridges on Mikrotik routers. So this is a topic that a few people have asked about and it is something that is needed in the MTC and A. So we'll be visiting on how to configure bridges on Mikrotik routers as well as what it will look like once we've done the configuration. Once again, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you like this content, like the video, share it, and yeah, I'll catch you in the video just now. All right, so let's jump into the overview of what a bridge is. So in theory, a bridge is just something that allows you to extend your network between different ports. So let's just grab this Mikrotik router. And as an example, each port on a router by default is its own broadcast domain. Each port can have like 4,096 VLANs per port. But what a bridge allows us to do is effectively link two or more different interfaces together to form what, what we call the bridge, where packets would, it, it, it won't just be about packets because then effectively what happens is the ports would work like, um, like a switch. So if we bridged these two ports together, for example, these ports would forward packets as if, or frames as if they were on a switch and this would become one broadcast domain where each of the other three ports might still be their own broadcast domain now there's very different um, niche uses you could uh, use for a bridge but mainly it is just to extend your broadcast domain to a different um, area um, what you might see people do is they might take um, a server that's sitting in the server room and it's very close to the the router however the switch is maybe too far away from the router or maybe the switch is full of ports and you need to make a plan immediately to get this thing on the network. You could maybe take an open port on the Mikrotik router and bridge that with the interface where your switch is connecting to. And that way your server and your network could communicate directly as if they were all connected on a switch. Um, you'd also maybe see this a lot on a provider network where you'd get uh, multiple routers and the routers would be connected directly to each other instead of on a switch and you might bridge the networks or the, the interfaces so that the provider routers can all be on the same network for things like OSPF or whatever other IGP you might be using just to make it easier for configuration. You, you don't want all of these interfaces to have their own like a slash 30 IP address, you want maybe, let's add another router to this picture and say we have a slash 29 network and all three of the routers needs to be in the same domain, but there's no switch to connect the routers to. So we're actually going to use this as the configuration and I'll guide you through how to set up a bridge now on Winbox and on the CLI. Also for reference, I'll be adding the the TOC document for bridges. It's like, think of it as a wiki page on Mikrotik on how bridges work. And all of the information is on there as well. But it is pretty straightforward um, when you want to create a bridge. I'm just doing this to show you how the bridge is going to work. And for people that might struggle to understand what bridges do. So let's grab a router image. Oof, I misclicked that. Let's grab an image for a router. C router blue. Ooh. I don't know why <laughs> my finger keeps missing. All right, we're good. I don't want it to run version seven though. So let's just save this. And now we've got another Mikrotik router on this topology. I'm going to just connect this so long to the other two Mikrotiks that we have from our previous labs that we set up. So see, these three Mikrotiks are now connecting directly together instead of connecting to a switch. So it, for me personally, it would be better to connect them onto a switch and maybe then run stuff like LACP to a switch, but you can do this. This is also a valid way on how to connect some provider routers if you need to, and it will work. So what we want to do in essence is on our picture, you've got Ethernet 3 and Ethernet 4 of our primary router that we've been working on connecting 
to the other two routers. So there's two uplinks effectively going to each router, but we want to now bridge these uplinks together so that they basically form one network so that they can communicate on layer three on the same broadcast domain that they now need to have an IP address assigned between these two routers and an IP address assigned between these routers and an IP address between these routers. They're all going to be in that slash 29 network that we're going to define. So let's just define it quickly on our primary MikroTik quickly. Let's just jump onto Winbox and to configure bridges. First thing you're going to do is you're going to click on bridge. It might be a bit small. I can't zoom it in, unfortunately, but it is bridge. And then from bridge, just make sure you're on the bridge tab then you can click on the plus sign and then here by general you can make this you can give it a name so let's call it bridge to routers and all the other details we can leave blank the, the important thing here is to give it a name when you click on apply you'll see a few other details pop up automatically like our mtu will get assigned and we'll get a mac address that is given on the bridge so that is also another important thing to take note of is when packets are being forwarded or frames are being forwarded it will use the bridges mac address instead of the interface the physical interface that's on the device so it will now use the bridge mac address not just the physical interface mac address we can leave all of these other details blank one thing that i do want to point out we, we're going to go to the stp it is good to leave it on the RSTP just by default if it's just a very basic bridge. But there are other things for STP that you might want to configure later on. So just keep that in mind. STP is a thing and it's very useful in, in the networking world. And in the MTCRE stuff that we're going to do, I'll dive more into STP. But just be aware of this. You can leave it as is we're not going to do anything else we can just actually click apply and our bridge is created now the next thing that we need to do is we need to assign the ports to the bridge so we're going to be looking at the ports that we have on our main microtic router which is ethernet 3 and ethernet 4. so we're going to assign these two ports to that bridge to do that just click on the plus find your interface so we said three and then we need to find the port or the bridge so let's say it's bridge to routers let's apply and then let's click another plus ethernet 4 and assign it to the same bridge so all of these other settings we're just going to leave as is this is just a very basic bridge so don't worry about it until we get into the mtcre stuff okay cool so we've effectively created a bridge now but the bridge isn't going to be doing anything because we haven't assigned any IP address to it yet. So let's assign an IP. Let's go into our IP addresses, click on the plus, and let's assign 10.0.0.1 to our primary MikroTik, the first one. Now, your interface, you can actually set this to your bridge to MikroTiks or bridge to routers. So that is the bridge that we created. We hit apply, and now we've assigned an IP address to the bridge. Now we need to do the same stuff on the other two MikroTik routers. So I'm just quickly going to hop on to the other two MikroTiks through the CLI and just quickly configure this. So to do that, we'll just say interface bridge, add, give it a name. And the name is going to be bridge to routers. I can verify that the bridge is configured by just typing interface bridge print. Let's just do detail. So it will give us the name. You can see the MTU set to auto. There's the MAC address that was generated. There's the STP mode. Everything looks good. Now we need to assign our ports just as we did through Winbox. So this is going to be Ether1 and Ether2. So we're just going to type interface bridge port add. The interface is going to be Ether1 and the bridge is going to be bridge to routers. I am going to hit enter and then I'm just going to hit the up arrow so that I can quickly just change this to Ether2 
hit enter. Now both of those interfaces are added to the bridge, just like we did on Winbox, it's just through the command line now. Now we just want to add an IP address. So IP address add, our address will be 10.0.0. Let's make this one dot two slash 29. And the interface is going to be bridge to routers. Hit enter. Now in theory, I should already have IP communications between these two microtics. So let's quickly test that. We can type in ping 10.0.0.1 and I'm getting a response. If I look at my neighbors, I can see all the microtics because the layer two is up, but I just want to see if I can pick up that IP address and yes. So I'm actually seeing the, <laughs> it's fine. So I'm not seeing the actual bridge IP here, but I am picking up the neighbor, so that's fine. But it, it, it is on that MAC address, so it's not wrong. So let's jump onto our third microtic and do the same thing. All right, so interface bridge add name bridge to routers interface bridge ports add interface and that is ether one and ether four so ether one and the bridge is bridge to routers and then ether four and let's add an IP address. IP address, add address 10.0.0.3 slash 24. And this will be on our bridge to routers interface. So from this Mikrotik router, I actually expect that I should have IP communications to dot one, which should be the Mikrotik just to the left, the primary. And I should have IP communications to dot two, which is good, which is right. So I just want to do a test. We are now on this third Mikrotik router. And in theory, if we're going to connect to it, it should go over Ether1 to Ether2. So what happens if we turn off this port now? Let's just suspend this link. So in theory, the, the link has gone down. Can we still get to dot two? Yes, we can still get to dot two. Reason being, with the bridge, we've also actually created redundancy where if one of the links goes down, the other link is taking over and that's where the STP part of stuff comes in. But basically now the frames will be sent out of Ether 4 to this router and then from this router it's being switched. It's not actually being routed, it's being switched to our other .2 Mikrotik. So we've created a very basic bridge, but it does the job and it's extended the network nicely the way we want to. So if we configured other protocols on top of this, like OSPF, it will work very well. So that wraps up the discussion regarding bridges. I know it was a base overview, but it should give you a good idea on how to configure a very basic bridge between devices. Uh, something to take out of this, bridges can be applied to almost anything. So your physical interfaces, you can bridge them. Your VLANs can also be bridged. Even your WLAN interfaces can be bridged with physical interfaces and you can extend your network in so many different ways. So it's really not just um, what we've discussed. It was almost the tip of the iceberg and there is so much more for you to learn regarding bridges. So again, I encourage you to go to the um, Mikrotik TOC page regarding bridges. And also I highly encourage getting an emulator, get EVNG Community Edition, install it, and you could do labs exactly like I'm doing here right now, or get GNS3 if you feel more comfortable with that, and get hands-on experience. It really helps, and you will become a better net network engineer for it. So again, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.